Okay, Wednesday morning in the kingdom, and I don't know if the beer truck is coming today. Johnny never emailed to say what he's doing or anything, so most likely no beer, because he's probably still recovering from the long weekend and getting the freight all caught up. Yeah, when you're in the trucking industry, a long weekend screws everything up. Okay, if you haven't figured it out yet, the iPod is inside where it's warm, and I'm outside where it's cold, to give it that dramatic effect, because it got cold last night. Okay. At uh, this morning at 7 o'clock, it was minus 35 Celsius, but feels like minus 42. And on the F scale, better known as the yo-yo scale, minus 31 Fahrenheit, but feels like minus 44. Okay, it's cold. It's officially cold. And it's the first day of March. Okay, what's that saying? Uh, March comes in like a lion, goes out like a lamb. I don't know. It's all lies. That must be a southern thing. But the only thing we know, it's cold. And we didn't plow yesterday because the, the, it was forecasting more snow. So look at the sun over there. I don't know if we can see it. But there's no sun dogs. It's extra bright. So that means it's going to warm up and snow. So then we'll plow again. But the main thing is, is we got to get this Lynn tractor up and going. Like yesterday, I performed magic and it was my lucky day. But none of, none of my local lady friends showed up wearing matching undies or any undies or anybody showed up. So, oh, well, it was a good day in the shop, not a good day in the bedroom. But, oh, well, it's like a marriage. Oh, well. Okay, it is chilly. I don't know. I can't scroll anywhere. But the yard is a freaking mess. Just like the uh, flag exercise. He's up there all tangled up. Okay. I don't know how long this iPod's going to last because it's going to get cold. But this is normal for us getting this cold, okay? So now all the winter road truckers are starting to haul because the government's released the funds for these communities so they can haul in materials and stuff like that. So the big push is to get the winter road open in January so everybody can sit around in February after they run the fuel in, okay? Got to haul the fuel in because they're short. And then everybody waits till March because only the government has their year end and everything at the end of March, okay? So what kind of a business is that? So everything is weighted to the last bit and then the money's released. But that's the way it's been for a hundred years. That's the government. And the people that work at the government, they don't care because they get a steady paycheck. And if their paycheck is late or, or short, man, those guys freak right out. But us who work for a living and wait for people to pay us, you know, that's a fact of life, but that's the government. They create their own problems, okay? That's why I live at the end of the world and I enjoy my lifestyle. If I don't want to talk to people, I don't have to. I don't answer the phone. I have called this place, so I know it's the telemarketers calling to see if I'm still here, you know? I just shake my head at the world we live in today. But today, we're working on the Lynn tractor. We're going to get a dry shaft made. The staff is sober. She's going to screw over and help lift that steering box into place. Because at my age, that thing's heavy. It was okay carrying it around in pieces for how many years? What, 25? So <laughs> that was okay. And yes, the fellow sold me a bent steering wheel. But that was what I needed. I needed that collar, that tapered shaft because it keeps everything tight. I knew I, bent, I bought a bent steering wheel. Now, if I went on eBay and bought a steering wheel for a Lynn tractor, it'd be like $1,000. And then I get it here and find out it doesn't fit. I am quite happy with my bent steering wheel because it adds character, like scars and boo-boos and stuff like that. You know, it tells a history. And I'm very pleased because you need that tapered collar hub or whatever to keep the steering box tight, to keep that little worm gear in the center of the foo-foo thing of the big gear. Because if everything isn't centered, everything goes all to shit, okay? We found that out. Plus, having sealed bearings in there, too, will keep the balls from falling out and going into the worm. When I hit a tree or a tree hugger or a rock, the rock of Story Lake, oh, yeah. I smashed up my Lynn tractor steering on the rock of Story Lake, and then I think it was 2008 or 2009, a contractor went down there, going to brush the hydro line. He's driving a brand-new D6 Cat, just boot right along. He hit the rock of Story Lake and then he broke his cat. You know, just broke it big time. Like, I mean, big time. And I told him about the rock of Story Lake, but he don't listen. Free advice. I'm getting tired of that. I tell people how things are done or give free information and people don't listen. Then they message you or email you afterwards. Oh, the motor blew up. Well, no shit. Okay. But that's the thing. I'm an old timer now. I'm old.
I should get back to work. I got to keep going here. Got to walk the dogs around the yard. It's too cold to take them on the trail. Plus, it's too cold for me. All right, I better get to work. The boss is coming. Okay, lunchtime in the kingdom, and we had a successful morning with getting the big sprocket welded on. Okay, the sprocket is warped or bent or whatever. It didn't lay flat on the table. Oops, I got the burps again. It's those peanuts. Oh, God, he... Hopefully I don't burp myself to death. Okay, so I got fancy. Brought out the dial indicator thinking this is some high-tech uh, job we're doing here. You know, do the rotation of the Earth or we're going to Mars. But with the sprocket being bent, I just went with a with a straight edge or whatever uh, square off of here to the frame mount here. And it was 8 and 5 eighths or whatever. No big wow. So I got it on there. But you have to remember this is a chain. The speed this thing's traveling, the chain is not going to jump out of the sprocket, okay? But this is what they had originally, okay? And this was on here. So, oops, go back up. So you can tell how many times you have to spin that steering wheel to try and get the skis to turn also too i almost made a mistake again for the first time in my life i went out to lin number one to measure the sprocket location to the steering box which is totally wrong because the shaft of the underneath where this chain goes okay here who said that sprocket's in the factory location so i got smart and measured off of that and it's actually this sprocket is out a bit farther from the steering box which is good all right, so now we'll go on to the other project we're doing. For the V12 to fit back in 2021, we had to cut the firewall out of the lint. So we're going to put this back in and make it so it's just temporary because we want, uh, how do you say, the engine fumes to stay where the engine is, not uh, in the cab uh, smoking us to death. Okay, we drag out some dry shafts of inventory. We got some new U-joints kind of sort of maybe. But you can see the size of the dry shaft we're playing with, with the V12. Sir Rodney can tell you what size a series or whatever that is in Spicer, but it's like the three ton to five ton trucks or the mid size they say. And that's the original dry shaft off Lin number one. We're just using it as a template or a copy because we don't want to damage it in case we break the dry shaft that's on there. So a couple weeks ago, thought was required, I made that, but it's a little too big. For these here to bolt on okay so we have to regroup okay to regroup we're drilling i cut out another thick plate with the plasma cutter it liked me today now we're going to drill these holes again and then mount our bolt onto the uh the square flange or whatever for the dry shaft so we can make a light duty dry shaft to drive this thing around the yard and wave at the ladies and to get film for the first time in 25 years Okay, after coffee in the kingdom and the struggle was unreal. That steering box is heavy, plus that wheel is very big. So we had to put it in through the firewall here and shove it in. So next time we'll take the steering wheel off. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Steering box turns, or you turn the wheel, the big sprocket turns, and the shaft down there winds up the chains, or unwinds the chains. Okay, these are the chain winder things. This is on the bottom, the other side's on the top. So one in, one out when you go to turn. And I'll scroll sideways here. Okay, we had extra chain left over because somebody put hydraulic steering on, then we cut the chain. So now we have a little problem here. So we corrected it with duct tape, and then that's the way it goes. Okay, also too, because the front end is up in the air so the skis can turn, we'll do a video on that. We get out the custom-made... Uh, grease thingy all right so this is the winter grease tube you can see the grease is kind of slimy there but you can see down in here well i'm not very good with the light but we push it in there okay because everything's hanging down so we can get this flattened tube in there to pump in the grease all right let's see if we got enough talent here i'm going to change hands should have a film crew all right which way we want to go oh one, two, three. Okay, so we're turning there. This is what's happening down here. Okay. You don't turn very far, and then we turn it back. I don't know if this is working. It gives you an idea of what it's like to do things. Okay, all right. But you gotta remember this steering box is tight because we packed it right full of grease. And it'll get better when we work it in. Plus, we proved yesterday that the shafts are bent. It is a tight fit down in here. Okay, 
but to get in and out of the lid, now I'm going to have trouble because i got a beer belly. There's not much space here, but I struggle in and out on the lid number one. So I can do it on this one too. So I guess we can only have skinny drivers unless we get in and out the passenger side. All right, we got to go make a drive shop now. Okay, we're working late. We spent a couple hours looking for parts for this dry shop. Just drove me nuts because I couldn't have find anything. Okay, but I need this flange here at the end, even if it has this goofy thing here. But this is the original Lynn Tractor number one dry shop before I upgraded. And I think I used drill steel here, or drill pipe or something heavy wall. So when I got this yoke here that slides into the trans automatic transmission, it didn't slide into this pipe or whatever. Okay. So I just did a butt weld. Okay, we'll hope for the best. They might have a little bit of a wobble, but as long as we get some pictures, because I'm getting tired of this being in the shop, we got other things to do. We got to start having fun. This is getting boring, like a marriage. Okay, it's eight o'clock at night, and we're Jimmy rigging the rod in to see if it's gonna work, because I tried to use the one out of the 46, but it's too vertical, and it'd be too hard to mount this one here. We'll just slap in and call it good. And we got the dry shaft in. And it kind of shrunk. I don't know what happened. If I measured, 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 and then when I put it in, but I don't want any space down here at the slide yoke right here because I want it to be really strong. So I had to whip it out, add an inch. Oh, well. Well, what do you do? That's the joys of Jimmy rigging, trying to get this thing done. I'd like to take this thing and drive it out of the shop tomorrow and turn it around because I'm working at the motor at this end of the shop where it's cold and the tools are all here at this end of the shop where it's toasty warm. So we got the oil for the Lynn transmission and we got the ATF for the transmission, the automatic. And then we got to put the uh, firewall back in so the master switch and the gauges all work out. I don't know if we can see them and then that will match the other Lynn, okay? All right, let's go check on the flag exercise even though it's so late. Okay, it's chilling off again. It was nice warm sun today. And we didn't walk the pony because, well, there's more snow coming. And I'm busy trying to get this done. I don't have time to go to town and get the pony, only to get stuck with the book burb, okay? But the flag exercise in his natural state of being limp. I don't know if we can see him. He's over there. Okay. I think this video will be a little short. We'll put a little footage from 2022, I guess, okay? Well, I better go. I've had enough today. I did what I wanted to do. So let's go walk the dogs, and then we'll drink some beer and talk to you guys later. Okay, we had a little problem with Mr. Espar on the big backhoe. It was throwing codes and it didn't want to run. So I'm old school, so we don't adjust it with a hammer because the codes it was giving us, because it's basically a little turbine diesel heater uh, to heat the antifreeze in the machine, it wasn't throwing a code which size a hammer to smack it with. So I'm old school. We get the welder out. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little sunny here and cold. Get the welder out. Use the forklift to lift up the... Bunsen burner to heat the motor, tarp it in, and we give it a little boost with the track machine here. But I'm colorblind, and we have to watch which voltage we're using. So we have the little cheap ass multimeter here, because I like these things, because I can blow them up like Nikola Tesla does with lots of lightning and stuff. But I was able to get a boost onto the machine without frying the computers out, so that's pretty good for being a colorblind guy. So now we're gonna go drink some vodka to celebrate. All right, talk to you later. Okay, Sunday afternoon, off about four o'clock. We missed coffee break or whatever, but that's, you know, oh well. We get one chance to work and make money. But we got the 86 Dodge head hanger out, dragging the drag. We got the fuel tanks full. We added a barrel of gas for more traction. And we know the six cylinder slat six motor, which is lazy, wouldn't break the bumper off the back. We're just speed dragging with the drag here because these big equipment with their corks or high heels welded on the tracks gouge out the pack snow so then the little forklift known as the rut maker comes along and the odds are against the little forklift anyways and then it hits all the rocks and or the ruts and everything is just terrible so a little smoothing out with the drag and the head hanger that works out pretty good and the forklift's happy i'm happy everybody's happy all right time to go drink some beer okay here we are again mr Baco and mr espar are not getting along Last night the low bed truck was delayed coming in so we couldn't load at midnight when it was minus 33, still warm for the day, but no. So we brought the Baco up to the shop here so we can heat it warm. 
We have the diesel heater on the engine and the low bed is here. And oh, here comes the staff coming in right now. As you can see, it's cold. Now, if you look way down there, you can see the low bed's running. The truck is running. He's got the Honda motor going. That's all the blue smoke. So that tells you how cold it is. So instead of doing it last night at minus 33 in the heat, we're doing it now at minus 37. So now we have to get Mr. Baco running and down to the low bed and hopes that we can load it. But we're having fun. I chose to live up here after my great divorce. Oh well, I'll keep you guys posted as we freeze to death. All right, the heat of the day now is probably minus 35. We just did uh, the lifting of the hydraulic cylinders on the big backhoe with the green toy here. So I was lock over. The green toy had no problem starting. It's military issue, so it has to, because that's how we fight wars, I guess. I'm not sure. We don't take cold days off for wars, maybe. I don't know. All right, and the backhoe is on. Then we lifted those hydraulic cylinders into place. So they're sitting perfectly. Aaron who is better known as Archie in my Winter Road book series, is tying down the load and he's ready to go. So there's all his tire chains on the ground because he's going to leave here and have to put them on in an hour's time to go to the Winter Road. All right, and there's his Kenworth that he drives. I don't know where the scrap guy and his ladies are, but that's that shiny truck over there. I can't quite see it. All right, so there it is there. He's ready to go and he's got the track loader from hell. All right, talk to you later. All right, the heat of the day now is probably minus 35. We just did uh, the lifting of the hydraulic cylinders on the big backhoe with the green toy here. So I was lock over. The green toy had no problem starting. It's military issue, so it has to, because that's how we fight wars, I guess. I'm not sure. We don't take cold days off for wars, maybe. I don't know. All right, and the backhoe is on. Then we lifted those hydraulic cylinders into place. So they're sitting perfectly. Aaron, who is better known as Archie in my Winter Road book series, is tying down the load and he's ready to go. So there's all his tire chains on the ground because he's going to leave here and have to put them on in an hour's time to go to the Winter Road. All right, and there's his Kenworth that he drives. I don't know where the scrap guy and his ladies are, but that's that shiny truck over there. I can't quite see it. All right, so there it is there. He's ready to go and he's got the track loader from hell. All right, talk to you later. Okay, the morning after Valentine's Day and I was up till 2 o'clock in the morning, but it wasn't with the local ladies enjoying my Valentine's, it was those winter road truckers. Today's project is to get Mr. Light Plant up and running so he can go up the winter road. But it traveled here on the back of a semi and this is southern snow, it's all stuck to it. So we got to make sure that this thing runs and starts when it travels up the winter road. Because my friend Archie, well better known as Aaron, but Archie in my winter road books, who well, might need this as a life support or to save his little tushy because this here will supply him heat and power if his Kenworth semi quits. So I got to clean this off, get it up and running. Well, that was a little bit of excitement. I'm still puffing heavy like on my honeymoon, but the snow got all into the ignition controls here and it kept the starter engaged. So I turned it off and the starter is still engaged and then the motor started. So we're not sure how much damage it did. But in a fit of rage, I ripped the battery cables off to stop it. I didn't realize that was Hercules. 
Okay, Mr. Light Plant's having issues like Mr. S Bar. We checked the video cameras and me running around like an idiot trying to control the fire and everything because the switch was off and it was still running and grinding the starter and smoking like you wouldn't believe. So I whipped up a little power panel, okay, to bypass the switch, so simple thing. My staff told me the colors, but as soon as this little wire is hooked on, man, it gets a little strange. But we also had another problem on the other side here. When I fully charged the battery, just walk with me, I'll try not to get you dizzy. I fully charged the battery this morning and put it in this afternoon. So as soon as I hooked up the battery, the alternator went up in smoke. So no matter what we do, it's just smoking. So we're not sure what to do now. I think we'll have to drink some vodka and consult on this problem. All right, talk to you later. Okay, this afternoon's project is to put oil barrels inside totes so we can ship them north. The plastic tote will be strapped down to the low bed in amongst the other freight. And we have the staff up on the roof here. And I'll just walk over here. So instead of shoveling the snow off on the ground, then we have to move it with the mini hoe. She's shoveling the snow into the tote. So we're working smarter, not harder. More to come. The staff did an excellent job shoving the snow off the roof of the shop there. And it fit nicely into the thing, into these totes. And then we stamped on them like they were fine grapes to make the fine wine. We poured three or four pails of water on top. So we have a nice ice cube. So these barrels will stay put for transportation over the winter road on the low bed. Because low beds don't have places to tie things down. So little fuel cubes or totes full of oil will work out good. And we only have a couple, well... I'd say six more barrels to go and then everything will be shipped up north. All right, time to go drink some beer.